Here's a good tweet. Pirates need to bring up Billy Cook, Nick York, Henry Davis. But then the Pirates will go like 10-2 and two down the stretch, and then that'll be the logic to run it all back next season. That's kind of what happened last year. A little bit, right? Last year, it was bigger sample size. I think they went like 32-30 and 30 or something like that in their final 60 games. Look, we played much better baseball. Next season, expect great things. And everything came back status quo. I would almost rather this thing absolutely hit rock bottom so that you can do nothing else but look in the mirror. Right. It's year five of this deal, man. Year five of Charrington, Shelton, and this year they're likely to finish with a worse record than last year? That's wild. And the owner said that the goal is to make the playoffs? It's unacceptable. Now, I will agree with the texter. Like, I'd like to see Billy Cook. Mm -hmm. He just hit a tater of a granny. Did you see that? I did not. Oh. Crushed it? Yeah, that might be a good find for one Ben Sherrington. We'll see. It's early yet. Nick York been killing the ball down there with an OPS around 900. Henry Davis killing the ball down there. But we've seen that fish before. I wouldn't mind getting a look at those guys. Absolutely. See if they're part of next year's team. See what they could do with major league pitching. Yeah, that makes sense. Because what else is the rest of the season for? Like, what's the rest of the season for? Derek Shelton was asked that by Noah Hiles in the postgame press conference. Noah did a really good job here, I thought. What's the goal for this team for the rest of the season? Is it, is it still the playoffs? Is it to get back over 500? I think the goal is just to play better baseball. You know, we have to continue to play better baseball, and we have to do that every day. And what quantifies playing better baseball? Is that wins and losses, or is it just... I think to some extent it's wins and losses, yeah. I mean, we played well. Like I said, we played well for three and a half months, and we haven't played well over the last ten days. To some extent, it's wins and losses. Yeah, to every extent. Oh, man. I don't know. Yeah, man, these, these Dead quotes, man walking. Man. These, that, that's, that's what that sounds like to me. These quotes are just, they're tough. Brutal. Brutal. Now, he does make a good point, one that we talked about yesterday. You had a really good season. For 107 games or whatever it was, where you were, they were 52 or 55, 52 when this streak started, right? And in 10 games, the whole thing gets flushed down the toilet. He also said in the same press conference, that was the first game they've played bad baseball, but now the goal is to play better baseball. So which one is it? I thought you were playing good baseball. So he's kind of speaking out of both sides of his mouth. I'll tell them what should be at stake for the rest of the season. Play the young guys. I don't need to see Michael A. Taylor ever again. Yeah. I don't know that I ever need to see, no offense, Jared Triolo ever again. Rowdy Tellez isn't going to be here in all likelihood next year. Brian De La Cruz will be. You don't really have a, ch- a choice, right. so I'm playing him every day. Right. I don't need to see Yasmani Grandal. You know what I mean? Like, get the young guys up and play them. What about Hayes? I'm playing IKF at third as much yeah. as I can, right? Are you our third baseman next year? I'm also finding moments. You still want development out of O'Neill Cruz. I'm not suggesting you take him out of the lineup, but I'm I'm trying IKF out at shortstop yes. a little more than I have because I want to see if maybe he could be that for us. Put Cruz at DH maybe. Have him at DH. I, I said before you don't want Cruz to play right field in the middle of a playoff chase. Well, it's no longer a playoff chase. Why not? At least have him take some some practice out there in the outfield at whenever you're at home, you know, have him work on balls off the wall just to try it out. I don't think you put him at first base. He can't catch a he can't yeah. catch a routine ball thrown right at him, but I might do that a little bit. When Henry comes up, I might actually try him at first base. I think we found out he can't play right field. What about Bart at first base and Grendel while he's up here right now yeah. catching? Sure. Sure. Mix it all up. Yes. 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 Any and everything. Yeah. Because if you don't experiment, if you don't try to find answers to questions, then you are operating like a team that is trying to win now when you can't win now. You've got 42 games left in the season and you're eight games out of a playoff spot. You would need to go on like 2,000 Mariners winning percentage streak here to make the playoffs, and that's not in there. Even at their apex this season, 
Like when you got to the All-Star break and you were five games over 500 with Paul Skeens, that's a nice winning percentage. It's like 15%, if not more, off from what they need to do to make the playoffs. So to say, we're going to throw Michael A. Taylor out there every day in center field is just asinine. Mm-hmm. Me. Any of those guys. And, and you mentioned Grandall. Like it just doesn't. It just doesn't make any sense. I'll tell you what's interesting to me, man. You got Skeens going tomorrow. It's an Apple TV Plus game. Hooray, hurrah. You're probably going to see a big crowd. I think you're probably still going to see big crowds the rest of the year because I'm sure a lot of people gobbled up tickets thinking this team was going to be in the playoff race. But what does that sound like? <laughs> I, you might have booze raining oh, yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be a cauldron. Not not tomorrow with Skeens. You're you're gonna get the 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 requisite buy-in from the crowd for Skeens, but what's the rest of the weekend sound like? What's the rest of the year sound like? I think it's gonna be negative. I think it's gonna be ugly up in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we you know, the people have been dealing with this stuff for a long time, uh Pirates fans here in Pittsburgh, but um it's it's a shame that it just you know, went down the drain so quick. Like <laughs> just and, and then and then you you search for answers, right? And you're like, okay, so why? So why does this happen? Why do things like this happen? And then you hear quotes from the manager, and you're just like, oh, I get it now. Like, I, under, I kind of understand. Like, if that's what's being said by the head man. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Why? You're, you're, you haven't won a game in a month. <laughs> John Wainer comes on yesterday, and he is fire and brimstone. He is urine and vinegar. He is jacked up calling out players for effort, and he stopped short of criticizing the manager, and in his position, I understand why he did that. If you had that fire from the manager, I would feel a little bit different right now. The message needs to be what the message that John Wayner sold us yesterday was. But instead, the message has been, we need a break, we need a bounce, we're actually playing good baseball. (sighs) That's not going to motivate your guys. No. That's not going to do it. And then a prospect list just came out. Did you see this? Three or four days ago, one of these pro- new prospect lists comes out, and the Pirates had the 27th best farm system in Major League Baseball. So the Major League Club is on pace to lose more games than it lost last year, and you've been hoarding prospects for a half decade, and you've got the 27th ranked farm system in baseball. That's just... And the shills will tell you, well, it's be- Skeens came up and Jones came up. They've graduated. Okay, you need more behind them. They've got four guys in the top 100, including Connor Griffin, but he ain't going to be up for a long time. Tamar Johnson's not going to be up for a long time. The other two are Ashcraft and Bubba Chandler. They should be able to help you next year, but where are they helping you? In a place where you're already pretty good, you think, in your starting rotation. Mm-hmm. And they might help you push that portion of your ball club over the top. Where are the position players to help? Again, Billy Cook, York, Henry Davis, you'd like to see them. But York and Cook have been in your system for less than a month. So to think that they're definitely answers, I think, would be the wrong way to think about it. And Henry Davis, while I'm not totally closing the door on his development, you still can't get excited about that. And Andy Rodriguez is not a top 100 prospect anymore either. So it's not good now at the major league level. It doesn't look like the future is great. This is not really where I thought we would be. Nope. Um Two weeks ago. Nope. To be sure. Not even close. To be sure. you Man. Hire Wainer? Yeah. Honestly, if Wainer's your bench coach, is that a bad thing? No. No. 